In this presentation, we will run the payroll setup process within QuickBooks. In other words, we will run the payroll wizard in order to set up the payroll items and payroll settings within QuickBooks. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are on the home page. We have the open windows open. We're going to go through the payroll wizard now and set up the payroll process. Now you need to do this whether or not you're running the payroll on a manual system or if you have a paid payroll. You're still going to go, go through here and set up the payroll processing. In order to do this, you're going to need to know some things about the payroll. We need to know how often we pay period and if we're going to set up what type of benefits we have. Do we have uh, the health insurance, a 401k retirement plan? what kind of uh, exemptions will be in there. So we'll go over those as we go through this. And if you're going to enter the, the employees through this process, then you're going to need to know the employees as well. It is possible to go through and enter employees later too. So you can add employees at a later time. But if you're going to need to add typically at least one employee through the, the setup process, the wizard, and then this process will also set up the payroll items and everything we need in order for payroll to run properly so let's do this we got we've here we have the paid payroll set up and we're going to set up this wizard and again you would do the same process even if you were using like the manual payroll as a test function as well so we're going to go up top we're going to go to the employees and we're going to go out down to the payroll setup payroll setup employees and payroll setup that should give us a uh, wizard that will then open up which will give us kind of a walkthrough and interview type process to set up our payroll. First question, have, have you or any employees ever received a paycheck uh, yet? And we're going to say this is a new payroll setup for us. So we're going to say no, uh, no, no paychecks have happened thus far. If you are running a continuous payroll, then you got to have the issue of uh, making sure that all the payroll is in place for the current time period and if it's for the new year that's not too bad if it's in the middle of the year you got to be careful and make sure that uh, you have you have the payroll set up properly because there's going to be some caps as we'll see when we do the payroll processing that we'll need in the system somehow in order to calculate those taxes correctly do you need to pay employees today uh, no hopefully not we're not setting them up today so we're going to go ahead and continue from this item most people will be using the typical new employer setup where we have QuickBooks automatically provides all the pay types and benefits commonly needed by new employers. Uh, you can add to these later when you need to or the custom setup where we're going to set it up ourselves. I'm going to go ahead and keep it at the typical new employer setup and continue there. We'll now add payroll information and this is going to include employees and they're suggesting to have the W-4s. That's what we usually have the employees fill out before we start the process having the W-4 forms for the social security numbers and whatnot needed for the employees. So we have the new employee here. We typically need to add at least one in order to move forward. So we've, even if you want to set the rest of it up and add new employees later, you typically need to add at least one here in order to move forward. We're going to add our employee information. It's going to be Anthony, we just made up this name. So Anthony, this is a mock employee, more. And we're going to give us the address that's going to be necessary here because we need it on the W-2s and W-3s. Here's the address that we're going to use. This is, an, this is just a home for sale in uh, California, Beverly Hills, very expensive home <laughs> if you'd like to look at it. But this is a random address here for our mock employee for our, just to test our uh, data. So we're going to say next once that has been input. Then we're going to need the social security number. We're going to say it is 681848347. Mock social security number. Date hire. We're going to say is January 01, uh, 0121. So that's January 1st, 2021. We're going to start this at the beginning of the year, the year 2021. No release date. Uh, date of birth, we're not going to add. We're going to say male here, and all obviously the ones with the asterisks that are red are required fields. And so we'll say next. Now we're going to uh, check off the information that applies. We're going to say that he is an hourly employee as opposed to salary. We're going to put the rate at $25, and then we're going to check off what applies here. Do, do we have double time? 
I'm going to say that we have the time and a half is something that's going to apply. We're not going to really have a bonus situation. We're not going to have a commission situation or a piecework, which is basically they would be making stuff uh, piece by piece or getting paid by what was done in piece by piece. So 1.5, we could put the amount, but it should calculate automatically at 25 times 150% or 1.5. So I'll keep it there and we'll say, and note the pay periods up here. We may want to, I'm going to change for our example purposes monthly, just so we have uh, fewer pay periods. Most typically would probably be bi-weekly or semi-monthly or even weekly, but I'm going to give it monthly so that uh, we have less pay periods within the year so we can see our example process. So we're going to say next. So we have cash advances, mileage reimbursements. These are all options that we could have. I'm not going to include it for our example here. We're going to keep them basic for this example. So we'll say next. Direct deposit information can be input here, and that would be for direct deposit, deposit directly into Anthony's uh, checking account. And then we're going to have the state information. We're going to say that we have the California state subject to unemployment. We're going to say California. So we're going to say the state will be the California for both. While working in 2018, did, did live in any other state? We're going to say no. If he do, if they do live in other states, that's going to complicate things of a, a bit in terms of the tax calculation. So we're going to say uh, next. This is where you would need the W-4 to enter this information because we need it for federal income tax. So it's not we're, just, we're not just prying. This is <laughs> this is needed in order to calculate the federal income tax. So we need married. We're going to, we need that uh, it's going to have four exemptions from the W-4, no extra withholding, uh, non-resident doesn't apply, doesn't apply subject to Medicare, Social Security, and uh, federal unemployment. So we're going to keep it at that and say next once that has been completed. Uh, state, we're going to keep that the same. It might, they could differ from the state and the number of allowances. I'm going to keep it the same at four and withholdings and we're going to say subject to state unemployment uh, employee training tax and disability those will change from state to state and that's really where the paid service helps a lot because the, the once we get into different states uh, it starts to complicate matters a lot even though the state will mirror the fed in terms of u.s taxes for the most part but uh, you know it's helpful to have the quickbooks to help us out with that stuff so we'll say next if we have more employees, we can go ahead and say add new, but I'm just going to go ahead and continue. So we're going to continue with the one employee at this time. And then we're going to continue here to go to, to the tax setups. So I'm going to go to continue and then we'll set up the tax information, set up your payroll taxes. So we'll say continue. Uh, do, you, do you file your 941s uh, or forms 944? Now this is going to be the 941s or the quarterlies, which most payroll will have to do unless uh, you don't have to, meaning if your payroll is minimal, then you'd have the 944. So typically it would be the 941. I'm going to keep that as the default. Uh, you have to look and, and see what the requirements are for your individual needs based on basically how high your payroll is. So here are the federal taxes. We're going to say OK and continue. Notice QuickBooks is basically setting up all the rates for us, which is great. That's the point. QuickBooks can pull in all that information and set up the rates and do those calculations for us, including the complicated ones, which which are the progressive tax and not just the flat tax calculations and the states, which will differ, which <laughs> can add complexity. So now we have the 940 payments include the federal unemployment insurance, FUTA. We're going to say we're going to pay by check or ePay. We're going to keep it at check. It's going to be paid to the United States Treasury, the Fed, the IRS, and we're going to say quarterly, uh, usually frequent. That's what we're going to keep it with quarterly. Uh, again, they could differ depending on the needs based on basically how much uh, FUTA there is. The typical is quarterly. If it was, if you had a lot less FUTA, you may only have to pay it annually. So we'll say next. Same thing for the 941s or the 944. This is Social Security, Medicare, FIT. We're going to pay that by check. We're going to pay it to the United States Treasury, the IRS, the Fed. And then the payment here will depend on what our needs are based on what our payroll is we're going to keep it here at monthly for this example and we're going to say next here's the california payments to the edd employment development department for this is california this will change from state to state we're going to need a, a state number here i'm just going to add a number 
for our example. And then we're going to say payment frequency. Again, this will depend on how much payroll we are. So it would have to look at that by payroll requirement. Uh, and, it, and it could differ, obviously, if we if our payroll goes up, then the state wants to be paid more often. <laughs> if, if we have less payroll, they may let, let us pay later. It also depends on our payroll frequency, how often we run payroll. Here's our UI, which is our state unemployment. And every state will have a state unemployment of some kind, remember. So we'll have that here. We'll keep it at quarterly, same here, and say finished. And see if I can read, put a number that they will say is appropriate. I'm going to try this one and say finished. Now we'll continue through here. And so now we'll just go and finish this up and go to our payroll center. So that'll take us to our payroll center. We should be set up and ready to go. If you, if you also check on the drop down list up top and go to the payroll item list. This is this is similar to items for a invoice for for the invoices. So if I go to lists and I go to item lists, remember that we had items here if we had items set up that would be for inventory items and service items to help us to enter data into going to go to company home into an invoice or sales receipt and those are, those are going to help us to know what accounts are going to be hit and what not when we when we sell inventory. We have a similar thing for payroll. We're going to use these items. These items are going to help us to basically just set up this information and, and apply this information to the correct accounts when we run payroll. So you can go through some of these items and start to, to look at them. I mean, if you double click on them, it'll give you information about how the items are set up. We'll take a look at more about these items when we set them up on the manual payroll because uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to go through and look at those items and what those items are doing. And you may want to go through and make changes to those items to see where they're going to be reporting on the financial statements. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.